Thanks for watching this video. Please make sure you watch the previous part. In the last part, we saw Josh collapse onto the ground after attacking the Centurions. We transitioned to the next morning, showing a sunny day with clear skies as the weather. And then we are shown a manor, where we assume Josh has been taken to after the incident. We see a number of people in the manor talking about Josh and how he managed to beat the crap of three Centurions. Another person is also saying that he has been pretending to be mute. And then we see another person saying that Josh is five years younger than Babel. Then the other person says that it's only a rumor and that it's exaggerated. And says that a mute kid abandoned recently by a family shouldn't be able to beat up the Centurions. The other person says that if the rumors are true, however, that there might be a change in succession. Then the other person says that even if Josh has the skills, he still shouldn't be able to beat Babel because he's a genius. Another person agrees and says that Babel is a money user. We are then shown that the great Duke Agnes is a current master and that he became a money user when he was at the age of 16. And in comparison, Babel has managed to use mana at the age of 14. Wait till they hear what Josh did if he reveals it. And so the person discussing agrees that Babel is going to be a genius that will surpass Duke Agnes one day. The other person then says that it's impossible for anyone to compete with Babel at this stage. Josh then comes into the room where the group of people were, with one of the persons shocked to see him. Josh then says to go and inform the Duke, and he says that he needs to tell him that. Ah, Joshua Von Agnes have arrived. We then transition to the scene where Ross is kneeling in front of Duke Agnes. And right next to the Duke is a knight. The Duke then asks to confirm that the knight before him is Ross. Ross confirms this with fear, and he was then asked what his affiliation is. Ross then answers that his affiliation is the 29th Battalion. The Duke then turns to Chiffin, the knight next to him, and asks if the 29th is Grisman's Battalion, to which Chiffin confirms. The Duke then says, I see, and then asks for the suit of armor to be brought before him. We can assume at this point that he is asking for the armor that Josh has damaged. Then we are shown what the armor looks like, which appears to show that the damage caused by Josh's punch is quite severe, which is quite exceptional and terrifying especially from a nine-year-old boy. The Duke then asks for confirmation again from Ross if Josh really did this damage to the armor. Chiffin then follows up saying that Ross needs to answer carefully, since an utter of the slightest lie will not be forgiven showing that Chiffin is a bit upset with the discussion. Ross then answers that he has not been speaking a single lie, hoping as if he was reliving the memories of the incident with Josh. The Duke then asks Chiffin for his opinion, to which Chiffin answers that he thinks all this is quite unbelievable. The Duke agrees that it is unbelievable, then asks how old Josh is right now. Chiffin answers that Josh is only nine years old at this stage. The Duke then says that for Josh to be able to destroy a suit of armor made of orc leather at this age with his bare hands. Then Chiffin suddenly cuts him off and apologizes, but says that he does not believe Josh would be able to do that. Chiffin then clarifies that there has not been any single case in their history of a nine-year-old being able to fight using mana, and he says that even if this is the case, that kid would have to be at least equivalent to a highly talented B-ranked knight to cover their bare hands with mana, which would be impossible. And so he says, I simply cannot believe that a nine-year-old Josh would be able to successfully achieve that. Chiffin adds further that he thinks the likely scenario is that the three centurions did not want to be found out that they were bullying Josh and so they came up with a nonsensical excuse of making these lies. Chiffin then says that if the Duke allows it, he will drag Ross outside and teach him a lesson in public to fix the deterioration of their troops' discipline. Ross then says that everything he said till now has been true, and that what Chiffin had said is not true regarding the lies and excuse. Chiffin then says, How dare you raise your voice before the doom? And says, Reveal the truth immediately. Chiffin then goes on to draw his sword, saying that, If the scoundrel continues to lie to the very end, before he can finish his sentence, the Duke cuts him off and asks Chiffin to stop, with Chiffin trying to reason back that he believes what he's doing is necessary. The Duke then says that he intends to discover the truth once he meets the person in question, and he says that it was about time he meets him for the first time, and that he will go see him. 
Schiffen then thinks that for the Duke to go and personally make a move just to see the son of a concubine. This is quite shocking, because he has never even shown such interest in young Babel who he believes is the Empire's greatest genius at this point. The Duke then asks where Josh is right now, and Schiffen answers that he has been told Josh has arrived and must be in the first floor's waiting room. The Duke then says, I see. Lead the way, Chiffin. As they start to walk to meet Josh, as Raw stands at the back, we then switch to the view of the Agnes Mansion's corridor. And in the corridor, we see Babel walking across, assuming that he intends to meet with his father about an issue. But he then sees someone else that he does not expect to see. And it was Josh who was standing at the corridor, looking at something with focus and intent, while Babel is asking him what he's doing there. Josh, on the other hand, is releasing a lot of energy from his body, assuming he is looking at something he's not happy with, and it appears that he is looking at the portrait of Marcus Van Britten, the father of Caesar Van Britten, and he says that the portrait boils his blood. As he looks at the portrait, he imagines a resembling after image of Caesar next to Marcus, and he says to himself that he will definitely have his revenge one day, and Babel then says, how much longer do you think you can ignore me for? As his anger continues to increase. Josh then notices in the very last minute that a punch is headed right to him. But Josh manages to block the punch with his bare hands. And upon closer look, it appears that Josh has used a small amount of mana to block the punch. Babel, on the other hand, becomes quite anxious as he did not expect for Josh to block the punch. He then slightly trembles with fear. Babel then says to himself that Josh is emanating a lot of pressure, thinking that maybe the rumors about Josh could be true. But then he says to himself further that he won't go down without a fight, and so accumulates a lot of mana in his left arm to punch him again. But then, Babel is interrupted by none other than Duke Agnes, where he asks, What do you think you're doing? Babel quickly bows down on his knees and says, I greet the Duke which is essentially the gesture for greeting royalty. The Duke then asks Babel again, What do you think you're doing? To which Babel responds that he was just exchanging heartwarming greetings with Josh. The Duke, looking confused, asks, Greetings, as he did not believe it was. He then looks at Josh. Josh nodded, assuming Josh did not want to make a big deal out of what happened. But Chiffin, on the other hand, who was standing behind the Duke, says to himself that Josh dares only nod to the Duke and not greet him properly, which upsets him. Schiffen then quickly commands Josh that he needs to mind his manners, reminding him that greeting is required. The Duke then responds saying that your gaze is filled with spite, looking at Schiffen. But it appears that the Duke is referring to Josh, as was shown of how he looks, assuming this is how he is gazing at the Duke. We are then shown that apparently Josh is having trouble controlling his emotions after seeing the portrait of Marcus, meaning that his gaze full of anger was not actually intended for the Duke. Josh then reminds himself that the Duke doesn't easily let go of the people who show hostility before him, and so he tries to control his anger. But then the Duke says that if Josh has calmed down, he asks that he come closer to him. He then says that he wants to personally check whether Josh is truly using mana or not, intending to get straight to business. Babel then gets confused, as he is unable to believe that Josh is capable of using mana at his age, staring at Josh. And Babel continues to tell himself that, that Josh is only a lowly bastard and a stable boy who just cleans up crap all day. Chiffin then comments that he believes this exercise is pointless. But the Duke ignores him and asks Josh again to come on over. Josh thinks to himself that the Duke is one of the five masters of the vast empire, and that he wants to show Duke that there isn't any abnormal symptoms with him otherwise his plan for revenge will go to waste. The Duke quickly comes and grabs Josh, with Josh not knowing how he managed to do that instantly. The Duke wastes no time in using the technique to check if he has mana. When he utters, what? The Duke then says, this is, and we see a very shocked look on Duke Agnes' face as he uses the mana inspection technique. This ends part 3 of this series. Please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe for more.